Today I'm going to be talking about several reworks that can be done to the electric eel wheel 6 that will address issues that a small number of people have been seeing. All of these reworks have been mentioned in previous videos and basically with this video I'm hoping to make everything a bit more succinct and also I've made some small changes to how I'm doing the reworks and the reason I've continued working on them is because from this point forward all of the electric eel wheel 6s that ship out will have these fixes implemented on them. Now I've had some people email me with pretty uh, significant concerns on this, even though their wheel wasn't uh, showing the issue. They were concerned about reliability over time. And as far as I can tell, none of these issues will impact the long-term reliability of your, ship, of your electric eel wheels. I'm being very open with sort of the problems that I'm running into. I just, that's how I want to run my business. I've certainly worked at big tech companies in the past that were not nearly as open. I, I've worked on some really big consumer products that almost everybody, uh, at least in America and actually around the world has heard of hu huge commercial products. And when they run into issues there, even if it's affecting a lot larger percentage of people than what the uh, issues with this electric spinning wheel are, they generally don't make any public announcements about that. They'll replace the products under warranty, but they don't want to put out a negative view. Now, I personally, as an engineer, don't see it as a bad thing when companies say, uh, this is a problem that you know affects a few percentage of our, pe of our users, and this is how it can be fixed. So that's how I'm running my business. But I just don't want people to over think this and sort of get worried about the electric eel wheel. I, I hope that people can sort of see the nuance here. So with that said, the four reworks that I'm going to be covering in this video are changing to a shorter motor screw, uh, adjusting the pulley so that it doesn't rub against the motor casing, adding a jumper wire to the PCB to eliminate resets on static discharge, and then grounding tape to eliminate static buildup in the spindle. So the only tools you'll be needing for the reworks today is this little hex wrench, which should have come in the bag with the user manual, and a fairly small Phillips screwdriver. So the uh, first rework is to um, change out the screws on the motor. So the ones that shipped with it are five millimeters long and I want to change those to some four millimeter long screws and that will prevent um, some damage to the motor. Now if the damage happens it'll happen pretty early on and I'll replace the motor so uh, if you haven't seen it and you've been using yours for a while it's probably not going to be an issue but um, I will mention it. So I've already taken off the little motor pulley. The way I've done that is there's this hex wrench that I mentioned before and that goes into this little set screw and it, it pops off really quickly like you just saw. Uh, and then um, one trick I've found with changing these screws is that I just take out one at a time and then this is tricky to do on the video, but, um, and then uh, the motor doesn't shift around, so I find that this works pretty well. And I won't show you the second one, but it's the same thing. So the screw I just put in is just one millimeter shorter than the one I took off. And then after that, the second fex so after that, you've got the two screws changed um, out. That prevents one possible problem. The next thing to do is if you push this uh, pulley all the way in like this, you'll see that the motor shaft sticks out a little bit. What you want to do is you want to get the end of the motor shaft flush with the outside of the pulley. And what that does is that creates about a half to one millimeter gap between the motor body and the pulley and that's just a a good thing to do uh, a few people have had some noises from that area of their electric eel wheel so while you're changing the screws it's just good to sort of reposition the pulley here so that it's approximately a half to one millimeter 
outside. And you can know it's sort of there just by making sure that the motor shaft is flush with the outside of the pulley. The next thing I'll do, and I'll have a little diagram on the screen that shows this a little better, but there's um, a little programming header here. And what we're going to do is connect the outermost pin, and I'm going to call that pin one, with the fourth pin from the outside. So one, two, three, four. So there's a little jumper wire that I have here. And I just sort of plug that onto these pins. And what this is doing is this is helping reduce the likelihood of the microcontroller resetting if there's a static discharge that uh, touches the circuit board. So this pretty much fixes all of the static um, resets that people have been seeing. Uh, in mainly happens in drier climates, but uh, it can happen in other places too. It, again, all of these issues of only a, a small percentage of the users have reported them. And the last fix that I'll mention is that we want to ground the um, spindle to the motor. And in order to do that, you need to find a method of running uh, a conductor uh, from this saddle, which holds the bearing, all the way to the motor or to the circuit board ground. So what I found is sort of the easiest way to fix it for this version is to run it to the motor. And it's actually really hard to see, but I've actually already done the fix. But it's it uses this uh, conductive tape, and this conductive tape just uh, unpeels like this and sticks down pretty easily. It's thin. It's kind of a, a cloth-based tape, and it's actually conductive on both sides. So uh, that's useful for this application. Um, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it, but I'll sort of point out where I've run the tape. So I've run the tape sort of from halfway in the saddle, and then I run it all the way down. And I'm just choosing to run it down the back because it was a convenient place to run it. But it runs all the way down here, and then I sort of fold it over and run it under like this. Let's see if we can see there. And then it's running along here, down, and then it runs over there and to the motor. I'll give you a picture, but yeah. So again, it runs from the outside here, down here, and then it just sort of goes over until it reaches the motor. And those are the reworks I'm planning to do on the electric EO wheel sixes that I have currently in stock. There's quite a few left, so there shouldn't be any problem with people getting them. And I expect the stock that I have to last for a while. When I do order the next batch of them, I'll probably be adjusting a few other things. I've already got some suggestions from the community. And I'll, I'll talk about those later, but um, there's nothing major. I'm really happy with how the electric EO wheel 6 is performing. And it's definitely been sort of the most reliable and, and best received of my electric spinning wheels that I've released. One last thing I'll mention is that I am going to put together a bunch of uh, little kits. So you'll have noticed the three things you, that I used for all of these fixes were two little screws, some of this black conductive tape, and then this jumper wire. And while you can purchase these items yourself, I will ship them out for free to anyone who has an electric EO wheel 6 and feels that they want uh, to do these fixes. I would just ask that only uh, email me about this if you're actually going to use them. I don't want to uh, spend a lot of money on the parts, and actually the shipping is more expensive than the parts, but um, I'll ship, definitely ship them out to free to anybody who's uh, had, uh, who has an electric EO wheel 6 already and hasn't already implemented fixes based on my previous videos. In order to get these, you would just uh, email me which uh, is support at dreamingrobots.com. And yeah, I'll put that email address on the screen. And what you want to include in that email is just say that you're looking for the Electric EO Wheel 6 rework kit and include either your backer number, Kickstarter number that you have, if you have it. If you don't have it, I can look it up and verify it. Just include the email that you used either when you place the order on my online store or when you place the order on Kickstarter and uh, 
I'll also be able to look up your address with that email, so you don't need to re-include your address unless it's changed.